Hey friends, and welcome to The Christian View. I'm your host, Dr. Trudy, and I am so glad um, to be sitting with these two amazing men today. They have such amazing stories, and I know that it's going to bless you. So uh, we're going to get right into it. Um, I have with me Craig Steely. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me on. And I have Evander Holyfield. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So I'm going to start with Craig. Craig, you have an amazing story, and we're going to talk about um, your successes and your struggles and, and how you came to um, to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But before, let me just tell everyone a little bit about you. So you're a boxer, a trainer, a filmmaker, and a motivational speaker, and you grew up in Southeast Texas, mm -hmm. and you dropped out of high school as a freshman to start working for your dad. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Uh, as far as me going to work for my dad, yeah. Well, you know, school wasn't my thing. You know, I uh, like like I say, when I was sixteen, I, uh, anxiety hit me real bad. Uh, anxiety disorder. I developed an OCD, and I couldn't sit in class or anything. And I was uh, doing bad in school, so I, I moved on. And uh, my dad owned a company, and I went to work for him. And he told me most kids got. I went home from school, and he said most kids have their high school years, college years to figure out what they want to do with their life. You got 30 minutes <laughs> when I get out of the shower, you're going to tell me what you're going to do with your life. So I said, I, I don't want to go back to school. So I went to work and uh, climbed up through the ranks of it. And now, you know, I own the company and uh, other, other business uh, ventures. So let's just back up just for a minute. So you developed um, anxiety disorder and OCD when you were around 16, or did you just realize at 16, this is what was going on and you just, Social anxiety and well, it, it first hit me when I was in third grade, and I never got help. I didn't know, you know, in 1982, nobody knew what what, he, especially where I live, and so um, uh, it hit me real bad there. I mean, severely, I suffered. I mean, it was uh, uh, it really made an impact on my life how bad I suffered, and I eventually uh, we moved, and it kind of pulled me out of it. And I would have phobias and stuff in my OCD. I never understood what any of it was, but I didn't have that deep anxiety like I had before and everything but I had phobias and then it then it hit me again when I was 16 I had a severe panic attack in school and it hit me again and then um I struggled for almost a year without any help trying to hide it I didn't know I felt like I was losing my mind right. but eventually I broke down and told my parents you know I was like I need to go get help and so fortunately I was able to go get you know psychiatric help and um, it was, it was a struggle. It wasn't a, a cure. I was put on medication. They didn't have stuff in 1990. And so I kept going and struggling and my buddy Evander had always been my idol, you know, since I was a kid in boxing and, and through my dark times there, you know, as a kid, I would, I would look up to him, uh, because I started boxing at 16 to try to give me something to, uh, something to look at besides all my suffering, you know, and right. I did that. And so even in my darkest days, you know, I'd look at Holyfield and I'd say, you know, he, he never quits, you know, and, and the way he carried himself and everything and the wars he fought. And I was like, man, if I can be like that, you know, I can beat what's going on inside my head, you know. So I, uh, uh, he had been my idol and um, um, through everything. And then I watched him as I was growing up and I, I was lost. I, I, I wasn't a believer. And um, um, and I was taking this medication and it, it kept coming back. I was having problems for, you know, this has been six years now. And then at the age of 22, when he had a big fight, I don't want to give too much because my book. Right. No, yeah, because you do have a book coming out. Yeah, so. but, but I'm just trying to catch. So anyway, to make a long story short, a big fight come up. Holyfield was fighting. And through that fight, the Lord called on me. Right. And through that, I said, I want what he has. And so. You want what Holyfield has. I wanted what Holyfield has. Because yeah. he, he stood up there and, you know, he, he said how he won the fight. You know, and, and everybody thought he was going to lose. And I mean, and I'm not going to lie. Sorry, Holy, don't hit me when you see me. But I thought he was I thought he was going to lose. And right. so as I'm watching this thing, you know, end up, uh, it really it, it's the way the Lord called on me. And right. so long story short, end up uh, turning my life to the Lord. At um, what age were you then? I was 22. OK. And I turned my life to the Lord. And then um, uh, I trained fighters and everything. And years went by. And then uh, everybody would say, you need to write Evander and tell him this. I'm like, man, it, you know, it's going to get lost in fan mail, you know, right. this. And so Kenny Weldon that trained him also trained me. And when I was cornering fights one day, he asked me if I wanted to meet him in 2001. And I was like, he never knew that. I was like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. <laughs> so I go there, man. We, we meet each other and everything. We get talking. And then years went by. And then the Lord's brought us back together in the last few years, you know. Amen. And, yeah, it's Amen. just been a real 
I love that. I want to go. I want to back up for just a minute. And, mm -hmm. you know, you said at 16, you reached out to your mom and your dad. Correct. And I just want our viewers to hear hear that, that you reached out. It's OK to reach out when you need help. Right. You know, the enemy wants us to keep it hidden. He wants us to think that we're the only ones suffering. Right. right? But when we bring it to the light, whatever that is, anxiety, depression, OCD, whatever it is, we bring it to the light. That's when the Lord can start the healing process. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I really want people to hear that because look at you today. You have so many successes. Right. And, and you know, I still it's it's uh, I went, uh, you know, I've had periods in my life where I've, I've, I've done well. It's, it's, a, it's a daily struggle, but I fight through it. And, you know, I have I have better times and when it gets bad. But then I went a five year stretch um, a little over three years ago. I went five years previous to that of tremendous suffering again, it hit me. I mean, uh, it knocked me down pretty good. And uh, when I came out of it, you know, which I, I kept fighting, I wouldn't quit. You know, I tried medicines, nothing was working, but it was getting, you know, it was bad. And I said, I, I'm not going to quit. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. It's, it's got to get, it's going to get better. And then I, I eventually did. I got to a right to a good doctor and got on the proper medication and did better and fought through it. And then, um, you know, so you, yes, you, you can get better. And, and that's the thing the message I want to tell people is that you can get better. There's hope, you know, and even though, even though you don't feel it, you've got to hang in there no matter how much it is, because that, that last little thing you keep going, it could be the door to open it up. So, so, and you will get better. That's right. Your breakthrough can be right around the corner. Exactly. A lot of times we give up too soon. So let's talk a little bit about how you and um, Holyfield met. You, you sent him a letter and you weren't expecting to hear back from him. And so, no, no, I, I never sent him. I never sent him a letter. I would oh, tell people. You know, I was like, he, you know, I get a fan picture, something autographed or what have you. Then Penny Weldon came up to me one day and said, just out of nowhere, said, "Would you like to meet Evander?" And I was like, "Say what?" <laughs> and so I got that was in two thousand one. Okay. Then you got to fast forward eighteen years later when I've come out of all this stuff and I kind of drifted away from God. You know, I, uh, my OCD I, is, a, is a deal. It's in my book, but I, I drifted away from God and I was running from Him, and uh, then he. he he drew me back to him and I, I, I was mad. I said, I'm going to make a film about my life and everything, you know, this, this certain part of it. And so I went to this deal and I was getting very frustrated because I didn't want to get involved in some stuff. And I said, God, I finally said, what do you want me to do? And he says, get hold of Evander Holyfield. And I thought that was the craziest thing I ever heard yeah. in my life. Cause I'm saying how in the world, I mean, I didn't Evander in a movie. I was like, how, why would you, that's the craziest thing. I don't even know how to get hold of him. And then he said for another guy, a, a friend, Tim Hallmark, he said, get hold of Tim Hallmark first. And again, I thought that was the craziest thing I ever heard because, you know, so I sent him a message. Uh, we start praying and everything. And then he says, look, I want to give you Vander's cell phone number. I said, he, what? This guy's going to think I'm nuts. He ain't <laughs> heard from me. He's he going to think I'm crazy. I don't even know what to say. Right. I prayed about it. I, call, I don't even remember the conversation. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. So, Evander, what did you think about it when he when he called you? Well, you know, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of people do call, and uh, you know, it was different because he didn't ask me nothing about boxing, right, right, like that. And he, and he so, uh, you know, so with with that, you know, I'm 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 that type of person that I know that um, I'm a Christian, and it's a whole big thing is giving people the kind of help that they need. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And so let's back up in your story a little bit, because you've been a believer, Evando, for a very, very long time. And you attribute that a lot to your mom. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Well, you know, the, the whole big thing, the big thing is it was my grandma and my mom. Mm -hmm. And you know, so, you know, the, the big thing is that they used to compete for my attention. They did. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it was kind of fun. Yeah, you know, I bet. You know, I'm telling you know, uh, you know, now my, you know, now, now, I was like, I love my mom, uh -huh. but my grandma used to get me out of trouble. <laughs> you know, she, I'm, I'm, every time things get tight on me, my grandma, my grandma would, would rescue me. Right, right. Grandma would come and rescue me, and uh, and uh, and so my grandma would, my grandma would would ask me. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. And and you know, like my my mom my 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 mom was my mama she goes zero to a hundred in oh, a second. So she, 
<laughs> and so, and so, you know, my mom told me, you know, it, it's certain things I just couldn't do. Yes. I could, I couldn't ask for nothing. You know, you know, my mama said, you know, if you ain't got, you don't be asking nobody for nothing. You know, other people do this, you let them do that. You don't do it. And so my mom, my mom was very strict, and uh, and so whatever my mom said, do I would do. Right. So. Good so, for you. And so I, I remember, like this girl, the girl was pulling on my shirt, and so my mama, when I come home, my mama asked me. She said, "Who been putting on your clothes?" I asked mama. I said, you know, "I said, mom, them girls." I said, you, you, "They said don't hit the girl." You know, it, it was amazing now. You know, I was at school and it was like all like more women teachers than men. Right. And a girl can do anything to a boy, but a boy don't supposed to hit the girl. <laughs> and so, 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 so they, so when I come home, my mama see their handprint in my shirt. It's, you know, somebody putting on your clothes. <laughs> so my mama said, so my mama go up to the school with me and she tell the teacher, she said, now, you know, people need to learn to respect boys too. You just can't hit on boys and think they ain't going, they going to hit you back. Now you're not going to be putting on my son clothes and all this and stuff like this. Y'all, they need to teach these girls not to hit boys. <laughs> that now they may be the same as strong as the boys now, but when the boys get older, the boys are gonna be a lot stronger, They're gonna knock the daylights out of them. <laughs> and so, um, and and I, I I came home my shirt like that. My mama said, if they do it again, you you knock the daylights out of them. You know, <laughs> I so it wasn't ever one way to hit hard, just hit hard. Right. And man, I hit them girls in the arm. They go, oh, oh, they they scream and all this and stuff. And I guess so. So now all of a sudden, I'm a coward because I'm hitting the girls too hard. And so, so, so my mama said, well, I told you one time, they don't supposed to be hitting him. Just like he don't supposed to hit them. The high in the world, you're going to, you gonna let them hit him, and he can't hit them back. Right. Like this, and you know, and and so, so my mom, they, my mama would go off, mm -hmm. and and so then all of a sudden, I, you know, I hit. They said he hit the girls too hard, and you don't hit a girl that hard. I'm, I'm you know, I'm as a kid when you when you hit somebody, they hit you, you just hit them back. <laughs> And, you yeah. know, I, so you know, so I got in a lot of trouble that, and you know, my so my my now when I get a whooping, my grandmama cried too. <laughs> so my grandmama said, when 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 I get hit, she get hit too. <laughs> so so, but it's a way that she got me out of uh, all these things. Cause my grandmama, you know, my grandmama tell me about what the word of God and all this. My grandmama say, when when I get hit, she get hit too. Right. So, and so, and so my, so, so my grandmama, you know, my, my mama would whoop me. Oh, my mama would tear me up. And, and so when it, when it, the whooping is over, my grandmama, my grandmama will at least come back and say, what did you do this time? <laughs> she said, what did you do this time? So, so my grandmama talked me out of how not get whooping because she said, no, 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 no. I said, cause, cause my mama say, if you, my, my mama words were, if you're big enough to pass a lick, you're big enough to take one. Right. So don't nobody, you not, you don't hit nobody and you don't let nobody hit you. Amen. Yeah. Like that. So, um, so the girl would, the girl would come and hit me and then she would run, <laughs> but she would run up there by the teacher. So, so the teacher would call my mama and tell my mama I'm chasing these girls like this. And so now, now it took my grandmama to get me out of this. Cause, Cause my grandmama came and said, she said, uh, what is happening? I said, grandma, the guy, the girl hit me on the head, then she hit me in my head, then run. 
How old, how old were you? I was about, you know, nine. Because I, I laugh because I have a seven-year-old daughter and she, she does the same thing. Yeah. She, she does the same thing. So, so, and what happened, what happened, what happened, uh, my, my grandmama got me out of it. She said, uh, she said, next time she hits you, now, if it don't hurt, if she hits you and it don't hurt, don't run behind her. Now, this girl used to hit me all the time. Right. And so, but my grandma said, cause she like you. Right. She said, but if it don't hurt, don't run behind her. So the girl, the girl hit me and it didn't hurt. So I didn't run behind her and she never messed with me no more. Yeah. <laughs> she, okay. never, she said, cause she thought you like her because you were running behind her. Right. And I would always get in trouble running behind her like that. So I'm talking, but those are the things that, that kind of, Change change my life because I'm talking. I never my my mom. I don't think my mom would have never told me that. Right. You know, she said, "Oh, you know, the, the girl like you. The, she she hitting you because she wants you to chase her. <laughs> but you getting in trouble <laughs> chasing her. You getting in trouble. They calling you a coward because right. you chasing her. Oh my you know? goodness. Yeah, oh my so. goodness. It's amazing how moms and grandmoms can play into our lives and just and just speak life and Jesus into our hearts. You know, so you both met and so Craig, you told Holly Hollyfield that he just he he helped change your life, mm -hmm. helped you become a believer in Jesus Christ. So let's pick mm -hmm. up right there. Well, that you know, that was back in 2001 and you know, we talked again and like I say on the phone, I, I went to talking to him and we just hit it off and we started talking all the time. And, you know, he, he helped me spiritually and, um, you know, was an encourager for things. And then we just we struck up a friendship, you know, that's that's to this day. You know, I mean, he's, he's a, one of my best buddies. You know, it's a uh, he's your brother from another mother, like your trim. Your exactly. Twin brother. He, he's, he's my twin brother. I tell him, you know. Uh, I think I'm a little better looking than him, but he argues with me. <laughs> I don't know. It's great to have. It's great to have um, somebody like that in your life, um, Craig. I think every every male needs someone that they can look up to, someone who can mentor them along the way, who who's gone before them, who can mentor them spiritually. And he, you know, mentored you also. Um, in your business as well, because you, be, you became, you know, boxing helped change your life as well as it did Mr. Holyfield's. Right. You know, and I trained fighters, you know, for, for, for years and years, and I would try to impart that to them, you know, and try to help them out. So, you know, if the Lord bless you, I think you need to pay forward. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So that's, that's my thing is to, is to try to help other people because the way he's helped me. So I, I try to help other people and, um, you know, and I've, and, through all this, when I finally did what he said, you know, it opened the doors of these other people that I know, you know, and my books and all the other stuff I'm, I'm involved with. He's, he's blessed me and everything. And um, it just, it's remarkable, you know, how he's worked. And, and go ahead. No, no. I was just to say, God is really good about that. Everything that we go through is for us to learn from and grow from so that we can help other people. You right. Know you know, I tell people, you know, I mean, I'm not perfect, you know, and, I've done things that, you know, whatever, but, but I have Jesus with me, you know, and, and I, I, I know he's my savior and he'll forgive me. You know, if I ask for forgiveness and I do my best. Amen. You know? and, and that's what we can do. We can, we'll do our best and give God the rest and let him take control and do what he wants, have his way. And Evander, Phil, I, I think you probably experienced that a lot just with your industry, just being able to hand everything over to the Holy spirit as your, you know, in the ring boxing, right? Well, yes, because the, that's, I'm talking, you know, it, it, was, it was amazing. Like, you know, when I was boxing at the time, they, 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 they had this thing where that they didn't want you to talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so with me, I tell them, I said, that's all I know. Right. And they said, well, they gonna throw you in on tough fights. I said, well, I supposed to be tough anyway. <laughs> and they, and they threw me in these fights and, you know, and, and 12 professional fight, I'm in a championship fight, you know, and, and, you know, and of course my, my sister, them, you know, I had four sisters and they were, and they were scared. To, 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 they they going to put him in there this quick. He, they know he don't, he can't do this. And I, 
I won. I became the champ. Yeah. I uh, like that. So, you know, so every time, every time they, they were talking about trying to kind of hush me up on, on, on the word of God, I, w- I would just tell them, I, you know, I, I wasn't, be- I wasn't being arrogant, wasn't trying to push God on nobody. If, you know, if, if, if you didn't like it, well, that's fine. But, you know, I'm, all I just know that I know that it works. Right. You know, I came, you know, you know, I came, you know, like I said, I came up the youngest at nine. And, and and my mama my mama told me, she said, "You're not poor." She said, "I'm poor. You're not. You just you just live with somebody who poor, but you're not poor. Now you need to think right. If you don't make the mistakes that I make, you you're gonna be good." She yeah, said, yeah. "Keep Jesus first. And you know, I kept Jesus first. Amen. Don't mean that I didn't make no mistakes. I made mistakes, but my mama." Bust me up for the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a, that's a good point. We all make mistakes, but yes, yes. If we have Jesus Christ living in us, and we're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. He will take any, you know, just like they put you in a fight that they didn't think you could win. Well, God took what the enemy meant for evil and turned it for good. You know, He did that in your life. He's, he's doing. He did that in Craig's life. You know, the enemy wants us to stay feeling like we're, we, we're never going to make it. We're never going to measure up. We're never going to get out of these situations. But you both are living proof that God is faithful, and He will take you and what the enemy meant for evil. He will turn it for good, so that you can be the light to other people. Yeah, and what I love about his story because he didn't just fight anybody. He fought Dwight Muhammad Kawi, which was a a mean guy. And right. the thing is, when they were trying to shut him up, he won and it gave him a bigger platform to talk about Jesus. You know, that's that's the funny thing, you know, about is how the Lord works. What was yeah. used to try to shut him up? He proved him wrong, beat him, and it gave him a bigger platform to talk about Jesus. Amen. And that's yeah. just the, the beautiful love of God, right? Mm-hmm. You, know, if, you know, my son above his bed has this saying and it says, I would rather stand with God than to be judged by the world. Wait, I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than to stand with the world and be judged by God. Because if we're standing with God, who truly can stand against us, right? They may try to come against us, but if we're standing like y'all both are doing on the word of God and on his promises, then who really can stand against us, right? Yeah. And like when I, when I drifted off, you know, it was, it was, you know, it, it was, it was out in the world, you know, and everything. And even though I'm still in the world and I mess up sometimes, you know, but it was different. I, I, you know, I was running from God. He was miserable, right. you know, and you can't run from him because he kept on trying to pull me back, you know, and pull me back. So when I finally come back to him, you know, it's so much better, you know, to be in, in underneath that. And, you know, the thing people try to scare people with religion and stuff, you know, you're going to hell, but they, they miss out on the blessings that you have that, you yeah. know, the, the, um, the, the things that, you know, God loves you, you know, Jesus loves you. He wants to give you all these things. He don't just want to, you know, sit there and keep score of what you're doing right. You know, that's the whole purpose that he came down was to deliver you from all Amen. that, you know, and to, and to do good things for you. You know, I don't know why people go around these days thinking to be a Christian, you got to be beat up and poor and all this kind of stuff. And I'm a sinner. You know, if you read Jesus word, he don't say that, you know, come to give life and life more abundantly. Right. And so, uh, and he, and I'm proof of it, you know, that, that he can do that. He's blessed me from this little town. I am from the the people that I know and the things that I do now, people say, and what I love about my story is the only way I can tell is to put Jesus in it. Right. Because when they say, how do you know these? How do you do? How do you do? How do you know Evander? I like, well, you sit down. I got to tell you, it's right. Jesus, because that's the only way any of it happened. Amen. You know? I mean, you've kept Jesus in the center. And as well, long he, as you keep Jesus in the center. Well, he has to be in the center because there's no other way that we met. It wasn't like we were at a fight one time and I said, hey, how are you doing? And it was straight by what I followed God to do. And it all worked out and boom, you know, right. he's, he's repelled me pretty fast, you know? Right. So, uh, I don't think the gospel is meant to be hard. Do you? I mean, it's supposed to be. I, I believe that, you know, that, that we're supposed to do that, you know, as, as representative of Christ, we're supposed to do the best we can. We're supposed to not be, you know, not sin. We're supposed to sin less, you know, and, and that um, uh, we're going to mess up and do things, but to constantly try to do better. And right. that, you know, we, we, that he's our savior, but also that he's come to help you with things that he's not just this guy ready to punish you. You know, he, Jesus is there to give you blessings, to give you encouragement, hope, love, and to, uh, you know, to lift you up and do things for you. We can live a, a successful life, you know? 
Amen. Amen. And so, Craig, do you do you want to talk a little bit about your movie that you're working on? Well, my movie, yes, I've um, I've got a good producer. I've got a good uh, screenwriter. I've got, you know, distribution and everything. I'm, I'm uh, trying to get investors right now. I'm in the process. We have the business plan and everything set out to, to get investors. And, and it's 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 not going to be a boxing show. It's going to be a show that has boxing in it, but it's going to show my life. Uh, it's not your typical boxing show. It, it, I don't even want it labeled as a boxing show, to right. be honest with you. Okay. And uh, it's got that in there. And my book is more about my, my my life dealings with everything, you know, and how all this come about more in depth, you know, showing everything I've been through and, and the things that the Lord's done and trial and errors and and um, how at the end, you, you know, you win that, you know, with Christ, you're a winner. Amen. You know? Absolutely. He's already he's already won. Oh, he, that's it. You know, he said we're more than conquerors. He's done the work. That's right. You know? And all we got to do is go out there. And it, it's such an amazing thing, you know, is we don't have to do nothing but accept it. That's you right. Know? And it's it's such a hard thing, but it's such a, 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 a easy thing to do, you know. And uh, is, yeah, I mean, you think it's easy, but, you know, we that verse you just quoted, John 10, 10, the enemy mm -hmm. comes to steal, kill and destroy. Right. And he will do his best to keep us bound on earth. If he knows that he can't take our salvation from us, he will do whatever he can. Don't you think? Yeah. And then that's he what he did me when, when I kind of got my medicine switch years ago and um, I started kind of doing bad. And one night I had a thought that God's turned his back on you. You blasphemed. And it scared me to death. I started having panic attacks and everything came back again. And then I ran from it. I was like, well, you know, I, I believed it. You know, I, be I believed in what he, in, in what was in my head. And uh, then I, when I, you know, sort of coming back and talking to people, I realized that he ain't ever going to leave you. you. know, he's not, that's a lie, you know, and that he wants to divide you and, and make you doubt, you right. know? And so when I finally realized, because when I got saved, he, he didn't speak to me in audible words, but he did speak to me in words, nonetheless, in my spirit. And it was very clear. And the, then when he spoke to me first, he said, are you ready to make a commitment? You know, cause I'd been praying after this with Holyfield, you know, I happened to be, uh, we were doing these uh, housing authorities. My dad owned the company at the time and we were doing this housing authority and there was a, a black man out there named Johnny and he had been in the penitentiary gangs and everything, but he had been out for 10 years and he looked, it was a perfect person to put me with cause he was mean looking, you know, and I just liked Johnny, you know, and he was much older. He was in his forties. I was 22. So, but he was a sweet guy. And so I didn't know who to go to. And so, the next day after this happened with the fight, I went to work. I told him what happened. But holy, because God's using Evander to call on you, man. That's how he's used. I said, what do I do? He said, pray. I said, Hail Mary. He goes, no, 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 no. You just talk to God like I'm talking to you. Just tell him everything. Mm -hmm. So every night I'd sit there and talk to him in my bed. Nothing would happen. I'd go to work. He said, you just keep talking to God. Two months of the day, I'm laying in bed and I felt it. And I'm not a hocus pocus guy. I mean, Evander tell you, I'm not a hocus So. I'm sitting there and, and this present come in the room of this presence. And I said, and I knew it. And I said, you know, whoa. And it's, and I remember feeling and hearing the words saying, are you ready to make a commitment? And it stopped. And I said, this is it. You know, this is what everybody's talking about. He says, the next thing he said, he said, you will sin and fall, but will you continue to get up and follow me, Jesus Christ? And so it took people telling me, what did God tell you? When I thought I blasphemed and drifted away, he said, what did he tell you? He didn't say you're going to be perfect the rest of your life that you're not. He knew that he said, you will sin and fall. But will you continue to get up and follow me, Jesus Christ? That's what you committed to. Amen. When I realized that, I was like, I didn't do it. You know that he is there. And once I realized that, it was it was it took the burden off of me. Amen. I think that everyone needs to hear that because, mm. you know, people think that when you come to Jesus, you have to have it all together and you have to keep it together, you know, and, and that's not. That's not what it's about. It's about that personal relationship. And he wants that personal relationship with every single person. And, you know, I, I love what you said. He said, just go pray. You know, we don't have when we pray, it doesn't have to be these huge words. It's just can, it's like you're talking to a friend. It can just be praying like you're talking to your friend or your or your dad or, you know, or, or whomever. But God, in his goodness, he's like there's only one perfect person that ever walked the earth and that was Jesus Christ. And so therefore we can't expect anyone to be perfect. Right. Yeah. And you know, and, and the thing is, is, you know, I, when I first started praying for those two months, nothing happened, you know, and, but, but I didn't give up, you know, cause the Lord says, knock and I shall answer seeking you shall find. So like Johnny kept encouraging me and, and fortunately he's put people there, you know, and he kept encouraging me and I, and I kept on. I was like, hey, man, I, I want I, I want what Evander Holyfield had, man. And it wasn't so much what he said, but I looked at it like, man, because my life, I had all this anxiety. I was lost. I was doing some bad things. And 
I looked at it and I said, look, the whole world said this guy is going to lose, man. I mean, you know, the, well, the whole world, I mean, we're not talking about a few, but pretty much everybody's saying you're going to lose. And here this guy is, homie, Mike Tyson, here this guy sitting there saying, I'm going to win because I have the Holy Spirit and I'm going to win by knockout. And so when he starts doing this, you know, and I'm watching this fight, man, something at this point in my life, something is really drawing me going, he's doing, this man is doing what he's handling him. And at the end of the fight, when he knocks him out, the commentator gets up there, Ferdy Pacheco, and he says, how did you pull off this miraculous upset? And Evander says, I live by the spirit of God, Jesus of the life. He says, well, let, let's get off God. Let's get back. And hopefully God's here for everybody. How did you do this? And Evander, I remember giving that grin like you ain't going to stop me. And he says, because I'm led by the spirit of God and whatever God wants me to do. He said, I'm washed up. But with Jesus, I'm not washed up. And I said, I want that. Not, 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 not the boxing part. Right. I right. want when the whole world that says you, against you that you have something to stand on and prevail. Amen. I love that. That is so powerful. You know, I would love to just keep talking and talking. So we'll need to do this. We'll need to have a part two. Okay. Um, but before we close, um, Evander, do you have any like words of encouragement, a scripture you live on or anything you would like to say to the audience before we, before we close? Well, you know, uh, one of the, the biggest thing, if, if you, if you don't quit on the Lord, then you're going to make it. Cause mm -hmm. if you don't quit, I, Jesus already don't pay the price. Amen. If we just don't quit, then we'll be there. Amen. That is so powerful. We cannot. He, he's never given up on us. Right. So we can't give up. What about you, Craig? Any words of encouragement? Any scripture you kind of live by right now that you want to leave with our audience today? Well, I have I have a lot of scriptures. And the one that I always stuck with, because Evander had on everything, was Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. You know, and that's a very encouraging one and and also you know philippians uh three when, when paul says brethren i haven't apprehended but one thing i do know forgetting those things which lay behind and reaching forward to those things which are head in christ jesus and that's my thing is you know is, is no matter what people and i tell people i'm like look man you don't have to be perfect to come to jesus right. what it is you come to him and then you'll fall in love with him so much you'll want to quit those things you can't come to him by trying to quit those things but once you come to him, you'll fall in love with him so much, you'll want to quit those things. And then sometimes we mess up, but we got somebody there that's going to forgive us. Amen. We are never too far gone. Yeah. And and, and with back to the mental health thing, you know, is that people are struggling. We have a crisis in, in the in the country right now with yes. it. And we need we need more people to speak out and do things and, and not be so ashamed to say, hey, I have something wrong because we all have something. But to give the people out there, listen, there is hope. If you're depressed, you can get better. Seek help. And that uh, don't don't give up like that's what me and Evander said, you know, and it was a big thing when he said that, especially me growing up. And I hear him say, don't quit. Right. That was inspiration to me. You know, don't give up. Don't quit. And you will get better. Just keep yeah. struggling. Keep you know? fighting the good fight of faith, because yeah. what waits for us is the crown of righteousness. Right. Like and, you know, and, 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 and you might not overcome whatever you have, but you can learn to manage it and live a good, successful, productive life. Amen. And now, Craig, one last thing. Do you travel and speak? For on mental illness, if people wanted to reach out to you, could you go to? That's that's really I've I've done it, but that's really my passion. Is that when I started out to make my movie, I went to the platform as Evander used boxing. I want to use what I'm doing to show people what God would do for you, and I want to speak to people in schools, uh, not necessarily just to the kids, but I want to speak to the teachers because when I had my problem, there was no one there that understood. You know, I had a, the counselor at my school. I went there and I was struggling so bad and one of my I don't want to say one of my good friends mom was a secretary and she said you can't hang out with him no more something's wrong with him yeah. you know it makes you isolated more and so I want to educate you know people and tell them and educate kids that it's okay to have things you know there's there's so much I want to want to speak about that I would love to answer your question I would love to travel and go around to speak to whoever wants to listen and whoever they think I could give encouragement to amen well I'm going to put all of your information um, when I go, when I put it on YouTube, all of Craig's information will be on in the YouTube chat so that you can reach out to Craig if you want him to come and speak to your school, church, or organization. Um, and I'll grab, I'll grab my brother up there and I'll drag him with me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can still whoop him. There you go. There you go. And I just want people who are hearing, who are listening to know that you're not alone, that God is for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you're struggling, it's okay. It's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. God wants to set you free. He wants to walk you through it. And he doesn't want you to isolate or be alone because he loves you and he wants you free. Can I say one more thing? Yes. Is that a lot of people, Christians, you know, they think, you know, uh, 
well, going to the doctor or medication, or they, they, they pray to God and they think, you know, sometimes, you know, one thing we think it should be in our time. And number two is that God uses all kinds of means, you know what I mean? The, the supernatural means it's mixed with the super and the natural, That's right. you know, so um, he'll use medications, he'll use whatever to help out. So people look at it, you know, and, and it's in his time. And, and when I didn't understand things, when it didn't happen, what I want to, now I got a story to tell. That's now right. what I went through, I can go help other people. And it gives what I went through meaning that my suffering had meaning in it. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. God created doctors because he knew we would need them. Um, right. But when my, every day my son goes to school, I'm like, Lord, put the super in his natural because exactly. he needs the supernatural infilling of the Holy Spirit to do life. I right. mean, no, no matter what, that's what we need is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And you two both have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You can you can see it. You can hear it. And y'all are blessing so many people. So I just want to thank you for, uh, for joining me today on The Christian View. And I would love to do a take two in a couple of weeks, if that's okay. Hey, man, I'd love it. Hey, uh, my big brother, I can rough him up. and I know he'll do it again. Okay. <laughs> that's great. Right. will. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure. And thank you all for tuning into The Christian View, whether it's by radio, podcast, or TV. And we will see you next time. Take care. Thank you, and remember, thank you so God much. God bless you. you okay, God bless you.